Hello again to the lovely detective. Couldn't get enough of me, huh? Oh, don't deny it, sweetie. Look at me. Fit. Rich. Dangerous. I'm like catnip to someone like you. Really? So if I... pulled my shirt up... just a little, you want... <laughs> Ah, uh, there's my favorite color. Blush red. You know, you say the word and we can get out of here. And I promise, I can make you do a lot more than blush. Fine, you're right. I did come to give a statement. But I'm not going to pause my passes just because you're recording me. Hey, cutie. One more thing before you start the tape. I've got the best lawyers, and even better, butchers. If you use any of this against me, I promise, none of the charges will stick. And plenty of sharp things will stick in you. Do I make myself clear? Smart and beautiful, you little package, you're not. <sighs> Alright, is this thing on? Right. I am Jameson Smiles. I'm in a group of organized corporations that have been alleged to be a criminal ring. Some people have affectionately labeled me as a mob boss. My company does work across the east side of the river. My main rival, Torchlight, operates in the west. Now, for our company's sake, we've agreed to stay in our own camps. We keep to our side of the river. One of my closest friends was strolling home one day, and they stumbled upon a crime in progress. They understood that they had witnessed a drug deal, and recognized the dealer, a kid that works for Torchlight. Now this kid is barely 18, so my friend didn't want to ruin his life by turning him in, so he did the smart thing and came to me. You know, detective, you could come to me. Any time. <laughs> right. Strictly professional. My buddy comes to me and tells me what he saw. I've got a couple of contracts with private investigators, so I rig up one of them to dig up some dirt. Figure out who sold the kid any sort of work. Why I know a private investigator is a relevant detective, and I don't have to answer that question. I'm not under arrest. I'm simply giving a tip to my local police station. As I was saying, I send the investigator to look into it. He finds that the kid got the weight from Torchlight. Turns out, to the completely legal business we both compete in, Torchlight has been running a side hustle. He's been sending runners to deliver a new cocaine mix to my side of the river. Supposedly, it's really good stuff. Torchlight contracted some MIT chick. She's got a master's in chemistry and a couple minors in biology. She's cracked from some formula that is twice as addictive as the nasty withdrawal systems. Now, Torchlight is flooding low-income communities with the stuff. I happen to open a large number of jobs to those who are underprivileged, and I'd hate to see them get taken advantage of like this. But I'd love the privilege to take advantage of you, Detective. <laughs> You're no fun. Anyway, I know the police department is absolutely overwhelmed these days. Organized crime is through the roof, so I got the investigator. Bless his soul, to do a little more digging. Turns out, Torchlight is sending out a shipment of around a thousand kilos of the stuff soon. Now that is the question, isn't it? Where and when? Do you have a wife at home, detective? Husband, maybe? Oh, I think it's very relevant. I'm about to give you the tip that'll stop thousands of dollars of illegal drug trade, and you're throwing a fit because I'm asking if you're taken. It's immature and unprofessional. I ought to have your badge, officer. 
Glad to see you, my way. Now, are you, or are you not, on the menu? Single? Not by choice, I imagine. I bet you had a smoking little side piece once, didn't you? Bet they couldn't handle how much the work consumed you. How many nights they spent in an empty bag? Was that it, Detective? You know, I wouldn't mind someone who works long hours. Someone who doesn't come home every night. We just have to do something special when they were around. Make the time count. When and where? Well, let's think. Tell me, Detective. Are you free Friday nights? Why? Because I want to ask you out, of course. I'm thinking somewhere candlelit. Full moon. Cheese bread. You're allergic to shellfish, aren't you? Wow. You are a clever one. Yes, I was thinking of the bistro down by the dock. But I must insist that we go on a full moon. When the light dances across the water, it looks absolutely magical. Now, I'm no werewolf, so maybe I'm wrong. But I think the moon is full next Friday. Maybe we can head on out there then. Ah, detective. Don't leave just yet. You're missing something. Well, I can't tell you, silly. Clearly, you aren't interested in our date, so I'll have to withhold the last bit of info. At least until we order some crab puffs. So how about I pick you up on Friday at about 9-ish? You can even bring your friends. Although, I don't know if the commissioner will want to send a SWAT team to sit in a bistro on nothing but my good work. So it's decided then. Nine on Friday. I'll be outside your dingy little apartment in something expensive. Probably ready, too. I'm sure it will stand out amongst the slum cars. I expect you to be dressed to the nines, alone, and ready for action. Sound good to you? What kind of action? Oh, aren't you a curious one? Well, Buy me a couple drinks, and I'm sure we can do any kind of action you want. <laughs> well then, let me say it another way. If you get me drunk enough, then we might do it in any back alley we can find. So, you should probably bring your gun, just in case. You never know when you might need some self-defense. No, I will not be elaborating on that any further. You're a detective. Read between the lines. Alright, this interview is over. Unless you want to leave together, then I'll be going. That's what I thought. Can't wait to see you dolled up for me, detective. Oh, and try to get some sleep. I can't have you on my arm with shadows under your eyes. People will talk. <laughs> Ta-ta.